Why do people suffer in silence? I can't speak for everyone, but maybe I can shed a light on some reasons. I'll use myself as an example. In real life, I'm very shy and timid. I'm often asked, why are you so quiet? That's a video for another day. But to put it simply, people. I have a hard time opening up to people because of some of the interactions I've had with people. Sometimes when I say things, I get weird stares. I could say something as simple as I like pie, and people look at me like I just yelled a racial slur at the top of my lungs. Oh my god, you just said the n-word! But I'm black. Stop raising! Other times when opening up, I deal with people who I think are auditioning to be a part of the King of the Hill reboot. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. This usually happens when I talk about something I'm interested in, or something I know a lot about. And that's the secret of improv! Uh-huh. Just hands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or when I'm trying to express any negative emotion, be it anger, sadness, or fear. I'm, I'm scared. Uh-huh. It also happens when trying to call someone out. Ow! Hey, you bumped into me! Uh-huh. That really hurt, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All of these things feel terrible. And it's bad enough when it's a stranger. But when it comes from someone you actually know, a friend, a family member, someone you love, it is so much worse. There's nothing worse than pouring your heart out and then just hearing, uh-huh. When you're used to experiencing things like that, you start to fear that it's going to happen all the time. And because you don't want that, you're willing to do anything in your power just to prevent it, even if that means withdrawing. That's not the only reason for withdrawal, though. Things like depression and anxiety and suicidal ideation, they're heavy and yucky for everyone involved. When dealing with something like that, you're more than likely going to encounter three types of people. There's some that are overly positive. I like to call these guys the Kumbaya police. They refuse to see anything negative. You could be on fire, and instead of putting you out, they'd be like, Oh goody, aren't you so happy that you're warm? They'll often give you a lot of unwanted advice and platitudes that go way beyond it gets better. Ali Brosh, creator of Hyperbole and a Half, described these people perfectly. So without further ado, guys, gals, and non-binary pals, I present to you, Dead Fish. What's wrong? My fish are dead. Don't worry, I hope you find them. Are there any clues where they went? I know where they are. The problem is they aren't alive anymore. Let's keep looking. I'm sure they'll turn up somewhere. No, see, that solution is for a different problem than the one I have. Fish are always dead as before the dawn. Have you tried feeding them? How about bees? Do you like bees? Used to have so many fish. What happened? We should get together this weekend and make little finger puppets out of them. Why not just make them be alive? Why can't anyone see how dead these are? There are some people who are overly negative. I call these people assholes. If you thought you were depressed and anxious before, ho oh ho boy, just wait and see how you feel after dealing with these people. These people are very hostile. They'll often scream and yell and insult you. How dare you feel depressed when other people have it worse than you, you low-life piece of shit? I think in their minds they're just showing tough love, but let's be real. In this situation, and in a lot of other aspects of life, tough love doesn't exist. Oh my god, I can't believe this is happening to me. I can't believe my son killed himself. I mean, yeah, I know I told him to kill himself, but I didn't think he'd actually do it. Yeah. If this is how you show love, then do me a favor and love me less. Even though they both mean well, for the most part, I think, you're naturally going to want to avoid these types of people. Whether you want to or not. Danger. Danger. Red alert. Red alert. Getting too close. Getting too close. Whoa, Whoa what, what the heck was that? that? Oh my god, I don't know. Just to maintain your sanity. Or what little you have left. And then, there are ghosts. They want to help, but they just don't really know how. They want to try not to be like the other two. But that's a hard thing to do. So instead, they just avoid you like the plague. Hi! No. Okay. And that's really fun. Not! Martin Luther King once said, In the end, we remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. And boy, ain't that the truth. There is a fourth type of person, though. But they're a rare find. 
Find them is like finding a needle in a haystack. These types of people are the exact type of people you need. They give you advice when you need it, but mostly, they're just there. They distract you from all the pain until you can get yourself together. They help you see the beauty that life has to offer, just by being themselves, just by being your friend or loved one. They make you feel loved. They make you feel cared for. They make you feel wanted. They can see your pain, but more importantly, they see you. When they look at you, they don't see depression or anxiety or anything like that. They see you. And when you're going through something like that, that is the best thing to have. Someone who will see you and not just what you're going through. Someone who won't think you're crazy. Depression, anxiety, and suicidal ideation is a long and difficult battle, though. For everyone involved. Even those fourth people get tired. There can be times when you're hanging out, just shooting the shit, and all you can think about is your pain. And that's when you start to worry. What if all I talk about is this pain? That can be very fun to listen to all the time. You want to tell better, happier stories, but there just isn't anything to say. You don't want to become a burden. You don't want to ruin their happiness with your utter misery. So again, you withdraw. Hey, I came over to see if you wanted to hang out, but there's this giant brick wall in the way. It's a bad day when you're holding that piece of metal in your hand and you grab your phone and scroll through your contacts and you realize there's no one to call. All of these numbers all of these people and no one to call. In the movie of the world's greatest dad, the character Lance said, I used to think the worst thing in life was to end up all alone. It's not. The worst thing in life is ending up with people who make you feel all alone. And that's where you are. So you toss your phone to the side and you prepare to fight this battle alone. And you fight, and you fight, and you fight until you just can't fight anymore.